Let's give you some praise today. Come on, let's magnify the name of Jesus. Let's lift his name up high. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Child, my provider. Jehovah Nisi, he's my banner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's great. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Mr. Joseph said, I do it for the Buckeyes. Amen. I could do it even greater for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Uh, I mean, we're very excited about Jesus. How many excited about Jesus? Yeah. I mean, I'm excited about the Jesus, who Jesus is and what he has done for me. Oh, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. searched all over and I couldn't find no one. I looked high and low, still couldn't find no one. No one greater, nobody greater than the Lord, amen? So I'm going to pray. Uh, Father, I thank you. I decrease, you increase. Holy Spirit, take me beyond these pages. Lord, speak a right now word. Let your word have free course in this place. Touch, move, walk these aisles. I ask you to touch our hearts. The word will penetrate the hearts of men that we may be changed. That we may be transformed into your likeness. We want to be Christ-like in everything we do. So God, I ask you today to bless us, help us. We desperately need you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are on the love series. Love series. I like that. Love series. Amen. Uh, I spoke the first Sunday. Pastor Stephen came and tore it up. Yes, Amen. And then here comes Minister Rebecca slamming it again. Amen. Amen. Uh, so my wife was scheduled to do this morning. But as you know, she is in Alabama, like uh, Forrest Gump says. She's in Alabama, amen, uh, with her father who had surgery, and she's taking care of him, amen. So that means somebody had to speak. So and I don't mind speaking, I do, but I love to uh, rotate. I love to uh, see and eat from a variety of different speakers how God is using you, amen. And so it was too late for me to call uh, Brother the male, amen, I didn't want to put him under that pressure, amen, because he will come up, amen, he will produce a diamond for you when he's under pressure, amen, he will come with it with guns loaded, like rootin', shootin', tootin', Sammy Sam Sam, uh, matter of fact, he carries a gun every day, so he knows what I'm talking about, amen, <laughs> so um, I didn't want to put the pressure on, but I thought about it three times, I said, no, one, two, I said, no, I'm not. It's too, too late uh, to get into it, but uh, I'm excited about talking about my father. Yes. My father, I want to cry when I, when I said my father, because um, my father, my fat term, my, my source, he talked about my source, my, my, my foundation, where I came from, my, my father, and he gives me the great privilege and a great honor to talk about him. And I just like, Lord, help these people who are here listening. <laughs> so I love him so much. We're going to be talking about love. So go with me to the book of uh, 1 John, uh, 1 John 4. Uh, we're going to begin at verse 13 through, I mean, 7 through 13. 1 John 4, 7 through 13. Um, we're going to start there today uh, because we need to understand God's love, and I pray that you, God, will enlighten you today. Amen? Enlighten us today. The scripture says in 1 John 4, 7, beginning at 4, 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, 
For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love, in this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. And if we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. So, I know you may be like me, uh, I have heard 2,856 messages on love, okay? But I can't get enough of it. And I don't want you to be weary of it because we need to know this. Because every day of your life, there's a tug on you. Amen, there's a tug and then what's gonna answer is, two things gonna answer, either you're gonna answer, or God's love is going to answer. And how many uh, can admit that you have answered so many times and uh, got yourself in trouble, released things you shouldn't release, and you wish you had a time machine that you could go in and go back and change that? But there's no time machine if you can change that. Amen. We have to we have to go back and, and apologize. And apology is one of the signs that you have the love of God in you. There are some people who will never apologize. They don't believe they have to apologize. They, you deserve what I gave you and you shouldn't have did me like that. And that's why I did you like that. And, and they think they're walking in love. But love humbles itself. Love apologizes and says, says things like, uh, I'm sorry I did that. I didn't mean to do that, but I'm, I'm sorry I did that. Will you forgive me? Uh, because it takes somebody humble to, we used to talk about eating pie, humble pie, amen, when you apologize to somebody. But really, that's an act of love, that something inside of you said that what your action was was not correct. And how many ever, uh, I know I have messed up in conversations and I thought later I should have said this or I shouldn't have said that. How many have thought like that? I, you know, and, and so what makes me think that way is because of the great love of God that is in my life and, and who am I to offend someone who am I to, to, to abuse people when God's gracious and his love he's always forgiven me of my stuff and why don't I learn how to release that same forgiveness to my brother or my sister this question of love has been down through society down to humanity down to American history down to ancient history and we need to learn how to love. And when we mess up, how to get it right, how to get it restored. Don't just walk over it. Amen. You need to go back and say, I need to talk about this. And how many know sometimes talking about hard things are hard? Amen. It's not easy to say, you know, let's sit down and talk about this because your anger, your attitude was not representing the kingdom of God, right? And so, it says, I want to look at this verse here, uh, it, in verse 12 and verse 13. I want to look at this verse. Uh, it says that no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. The spirit that the Lord has given us is that he's abiding with us he's dwelling in us okay and uh, it's powerful to understand this because I need to, to share with you a, a natural side and I need to then show you the spiritual side 
when God abides in us, amen, when you, like if somebody even abide by a contract, we come to agreement and we make a contract, that's one more way of abiding, you know, I'm going to abide by this contract, you abide by your, your landlord, you abide by whatever contract, but the, the, we have to obey God's, we, we have to do it God's way, right? We have to obey God and we have to do it His way, not our way. How many struggle with doing it your way and, and knowing you got to surrender to do it God's way? Amen. We, we, our arms are really too short to box with God. Amen. I got little arms like, um, uh, what's that purple dinosaur? Barney. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember Barney. I love you, you love me, you got little arms. Our arms are too short to box with God. How many can agree with that statement? Amen. So listen, God has given us a natural, a natural um, love. But our natural love is limited. How many know that? We love somebody, we tell them we love them, but they get us mad, they, we're gonna tell them off, we're gonna get out of my house, I told you to save my house for one week, but then you get out now, you know, because that's our love, because they offended us. How many have been in that situation, either on the person, kicking another person out, or the person, you get kicked out, amen. But, <laughs> but you thought I had a safe place to stay, but this person said they loved me, and then, then all of a sudden I came in late one night, you ain't gonna come in late my house, get out! Okay, I'm just saying, which you can have rules, but you need to abide by those rules that you had, amen, that was stated in the beginning. But our love is limited. Look at somebody say, our natural love is limited. Therefore, that's why um, we have got Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there are no law. So what happens is that we need the fruit of the Spirit to kick in. That we won't just work in our limited love, uh, which is phileo and eros and stargate love. But we will walk in the agape love. Our goal is what? The agape love. Which is the only, agape love is the only uh, unconditional love. Every other love, whether it be eros, uh, sexual love, romantic love, whether it be a phileo love, meaning um, uh, I love my brother, I love my sister, or stargate love, a mother loves their child, whatever that type of love. Those loves are limited. And therefore, we need the Spirit to come in and help us in our love. Our joy is limited. Our joy is, is, is limited. Our nat I'm talking about our natural joy is limited because we joy, we got money, we got, we got things, everything's going good. We, woo, we happy. But what happens when you don't have that money? What happens when, you, when things don't go your way? Are you going to be sad, out, down, and depressed? Amen. But so God kicks in the Spirit's joy. And the Spirit's joy is that you could be going through tough and difficult times and occasions and things are not going your way. But yet inside of you, you got a joy that pat and a peace that passes all understanding. How many ever had that? Amen. People look at you and say, you should be going crazy. I wouldn't put up with that if I was you. You do that. No, 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 no. They're telling you this, but they don't understand. You got a, the, the fruit of the Spirit is inside of you. I didn't say fruit of looms, amen. You might have them on, but it gotta be inside of you. Are you with me? Amen. God wants us to really smell fruity. Come on, what fruit I'm talking about? I'm not talking about fruity. Rudy tooty, bop bop a lead off a bam bam boom. What's that guy's name? Little Richard. I'm not talking about Little Richard, Fruity Judy. That's what it was. Come on. But I'm talking about the fruits of the Spirit. We should be smelling fruit from us. It's that the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. That God is dwelling there in this place in our being. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me tell you this. Love is the key for us to overcome. We cannot overcome in anger, frustration, vengeance, 
uh, envying, strife, those you can't overcome because you're trying to retaliate from what somebody did to you. Somebody say amen. amen. But when you carry the love of Christ, amen, I often wonder, I mean, there's some things in the Bible that have me like, hmm, how does that really work? Because Jesus said words like, turn the other cheek. Do good to them that do you wrong, that uh, pray for them and bless them. What in the world is he talking about? Because that was me looking at, looking at it naturally. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. But once I accept him and I, I accept the fruits of the spirit and I walk in the fruits of the spirit where I have to challenge myself. Listen, don't let yourself, listen, don't let yourself get by. Only you know when you're trying to get by. You know when you say something wrong. You know what you think. Don't let yourself get by. Say, Lord, take that away from me. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not acting right. I'm not, I'm not dealing right. I mean, I've been angry. Lord, whatever these things are that is plaguing me, that is causing this discomfort in my spirit, Lord, take these things away from me and give me your fruit of the spirit. Give me your peace. Give me your joy. Give me your forbearance. Give me your kindness. Give me some of your goodness, your faithfulness, your gentleness. And most of all, give me self-control. But when you love you overcome. Love doesn't allow you to kill your neighbors. Love doesn't allow you to kill your brothers. Love doesn't even allow you to kill your enemies. I know you feel like it. Like, ooh, I want to kill. But love doesn't allow you to do that. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Love doesn't allow us to be envious, boastful, pride, prideful. It won't allow us to dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts always hopes and always perseveres. This love that God gives us, amen, is amazing. If you use it, you won't fail. Matter of fact, the scripture says love never fails. But where there is prophecy and where there is, well, the prophecy will cease and where there's tongues, tongues will cease but, and there will be still uh, there at that place, amen, where there's knowledge, knowledge will pass away. So a lot of times people, I've seen people envy other people's gifts. I see people envy prophets, or because they prophesy, they say a word, and they're a spokesman of the Lord, they speak things. I see people uh, that envy it, but they don't recognize that that prophecy one day will cease, tongues will one day cease, but what will remain is love. And if you have love, amen, you have it all. Somebody say hallelujah. If I got love, if I'm walking in love, if I'm conscious of love. The scripture says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, and now abideth faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these, I said the greatest of these is love. How many know that faith and hope are important? Our, is, uh, faith and hope are important to our spiritual development. But the scripture didn't say God is faith. The scriptures didn't say that God is hope. But it said that God is love. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I thank God not only uh, that I have to operate in love, but it's, it's good to know that you are loved. Amen. If your mom or your dad never tell you that they love you, there's someone that loves you. 
if your husband or wife don't treat you right and never speak that I love you. But there's someone that loves you. Amen. If your children never come back and say, I love you or I appreciate you, there was somebody that loves you. You're never, never alone. He don't leave you uh, uh, alone. He don't leave you loveless. He's there for you. Even if you go to jail, amen, God is there. Come on. If you go to a, a mental institution, how many know he's there? Amen. If you are a prostitute on the street, how many know he's there? If you selling drugs, making drugs, gang banging, God is there in the midst of all of those things. Because he's love and he's there for you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Galatians 5 and 6, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. Now, I know that faith is important, but faith uh, needs some help. Uh, you can have faith to move mountains and, uh, you know, you have faith to heal the sick. You can have faith to do all these things. But the Bible says if you don't have what? Love. Amen. It's, it's null and void. Is that right? Amen. This is what I'm, I'm seeking at. This is what we want to walk in. Uh, Hebrews, six, uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, I know faith is important. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Faith, the faith that pleases God is the faith that works through love. Amen. Love is the greatest gift. Amen. Love at work is God at work. When you are working love, when you are doing the things of God, God, amen, is working through you. You know, sometime I took a mirror, I, I thought about it. Uh, matter of fact, God had to teach me so many lessons on love. I, I, I had so many lessons on love. And, and one of the lessons I had, which I shared before, I'm going to briefly share it uh, here, is that uh, I thought I had love. I got love. I got God, right? And um, how many know you get, you're going to get tried in everything that you go through. If you say this, yeah. amen, I remember several times I talked about healer and the, many healings was taking place in my service. Then my kids got sick and we were in the hospital and, the, and it, was like, like, it was like, Lord, why am I going through this? I know you can heal. Come on. But once you talk about God and you speak God, you got, that word will prove you. The word will come again that you spoke. And the word will test you of what you said. I'm teaching you a lesson now. Come on now. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the word is coming. Amen. It will not go out, but it will return, will not return to him void, but it will accomplish that which the thing he sent it forth to do. How many know that to be true today? So uh, we have to work. Love at work is God at work. When we show somebody love, when we help a lady across the older lady across the street, we do uh, acts of kindness. We are showing people the love that's inside of us. Amen. I'm a, uh, the, the neighbor, older lady's neighbor, and her gutter is down, and I go put it up. Uh, well, I'm gonna pay you, son. No, this is love in action. Why are you doing this? Because this is love in action. Are you with me? So. I want you to understand, uh, I want you to go with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. I, I need to hear this message again. I need to hear it again. Um, 1 John 4, 20 and 21, it says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves 
God must love his brother, what? Awesome. Awesome. I, I had a guy I was working with, was a Christian. He got, uh, uh, oh no, I'm tell, this is story I want to tell. Is that uh, for years, I've got, as God was teaching me lessons on love, and I'm still a student of it. Come on. Uh, some people came against me, and it was a racial thing, and they was dogging me up at work. But they don't understand, that this is post Martin Luther King. I know my rights now. Come on. I know I'm free now. You ain't gonna just do me like I'm down south. Come on down in, the, in, in Mississippi somewhere. I'm not down there. Come on, this is me. This is, this is my old self coming out. I ain't gonna put up with this. I'm from the I'm from Bob Show you something. Come on now. Come on. This is flesh. Remember I told you you need to do it God's way? Okay. And so for, for like four years, I challenged them uh, intellectually. I challenged them uh, by the laws of the land. And I kept telling them, you ain't going to do me this way because of this. And I'll write a report. I'll do whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm standing my ground with HR and everything else and how people should treat people. Does that make sense? Okay. And so and it got really bad to the point where I, I, I was going to do premeditated uh, beating up somebody in me. I, I, I told, I called my wife because I was in trouble because my, my emotions was out of whack and I wanted to get back. I had the retaliate, retaliation spirit. I was going to get you. I had the vengeance spirit. I'm going to get you. Anybody ever dealt with that? Come on, tell me the truth. You dealing with that? Eye for an eye. The Bible didn't say an eye for an eye. And a tooth for a tooth. And a cat for a cat. And a dog for a dog. Anyway, anyway. You ain't going to treat me this way. And I'm praying to God and I said, I'm going to get them. And so long story short is, uh, the Lord says, it's not them, it's you. I don't know. It's, it's amazing when I even I, when I if I would complain, I used to complain about my wife. Amen. God would say, "Hey, it ain't her; it's you." And I mean, never felt like God was not listening to you. Amen. And he was not getting her or them, but He says, "I'm gonna get you, and, and I'm gonna work on you because I, you know, you can't change them. You, there's something in you need to be changed. Is that true? So what happened is I, 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 I said, what? I'm talking, I'm praying to God. He, and he said, it's you. And I said, what? Like, what you talking about anyway? I mean, oh, God knows what he's talking about. And he told me that I wasn't dead. He told me that, I, that if I'm going to let these footmen distract me, how can I run with the horses? called me to be a, a speaker, a pastor, leader. Amen. And I'm letting these little issues get to me. How can he take me to the nations? And if I will go to the nations, imagine if I go to the nation and I still got this frustration, this anger, I'm going to prove myself, I'm going to fight for myself. Amen. Go, and I'm over there in Libya beating people up. They shouldn't have said that about me. Come, you know, no, no, no. You need to be delivered from those things. And so God required for me what does the Lord require of you he required of me to die and I know I'm cussing at somebody and the Lord said to me serve them Lord, Jesus. Oh, these are people are saying calling me chicken George so and so's and all these Uncle Tom they, I mean, they, every name I, I can't even say all the names they, they call me and I'm going to I got to die and serve So I said, like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And so I went back that fifth year and I had a new attitude. I went back and they still play their old tricks. They play their old games. But I, you know what? I, I, the Holy Spirit told me to, to serve them. So every grunt job, Every job that, that people don't like to do, guess who what? Guess who volunteer for it every time? Boss, I got it. Super, I'll take it. Let me do this. Let me do this. Let me pick the signs up. Let me been working 12 hours, 14 hours a day. Let 
me do it. I'm tired of thinking in my body because I didn't, because I, I was sold out. I finally died in that area. And how many know there's areas you still need to die in? Come on, tell the truth. See, if you go into to a funeral and you see somebody laying in that casket, you can talk about that person's mother, you can pinch them, you can spit on them, you can slap them, but they won't move. And so I surrendered my will to the Lord. Was it hard? Yes. Was it difficult? Yes. But when I, when I said, God, not my will, and I surrendered to this, I started doing what I, above what they was expecting me to do. And one night we was doing road constructions, amen, and we, 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 you guys know road construction, all those signs, those uh, orange signs and uh, all those cones, and I, I picked them all up, all those barrels, I did it. I mean, one night I, I, worked, I did 18 miles of barrels and cones. I worked it. And I, listen, I worked it in praise. I worked it in worship. I wasn't trying to do anything, but I found my peace in the midst of a storm. And see, you need to find a peace when there's uh, things that are aggravating. You go into adversities. You need to find that peace. And that peace for me was my, my love for God and God's love for me. And that as I sh as distributed or I showed my love, amen, it transformed them. And I'm saying this really quick because I got to go on. So about three months into that year, we would work uh, about nine months out of the year. We off three months, the winter time, and we would come back, okay? And so uh, about th two to three months into that year, I wasn't, I didn't complaining. They was laughing at me and I, would, I, I just did the work. I didn't care. And then what happened is one night I was up in Michigan. Uh, Michigan, I can't say the other, I was up in that, that place. I ain't gonna even tell you, but it was, it was horrendous. <laughs> and I was working, and we worked all day, and the sun, we was there before the sun rose, and we was there when the sun was going down. And I was taking my signs out, so it was getting, just now getting twilight dark. And I was taking the signs up, putting up those things, and picking up the cones, and guess what? Four trucks came out there, diesel trucks. And they said, we're not gonna let you do this no more. You have changed. I didn't tell them that I changed, but they said you have changed, and we're not going to just sit back no longer, but we're going to help you. Jesus. Did y'all tell you these the same people call me Chicken Joe or so and so? See, love conquers. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love is the most powerful weapon that God has given us, but to offer in the fullness of that, you and I have to die out to let love come in and fill us. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I, I'm not saying I'm, I got perfect love in every area, but in that area, I'm free. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. It's good to know you're free, at least one area. Come on. In that area, I'm free. You can talk about me, spit on me. Amen. Because I'm a new creature in Christ. Amen. I'm dead and let Christ live in me. Come on, somebody. When, they, when, when people broke our church window, some of my homeless friends uh, that we ago, uh, they wanted to come. I saw you on the news, Pastor. We're going to beat them up. <laughs> I said, they trying to take care of me. Come on, somebody. And they was trying to show their love. But I, I said, no, no, you don't need to, if you catch them, you don't need to beat them up. God's going to get them. Come on. You don't have to beat up. You don't, you don't have to fight for me because he's going to fight for me. Amen. <laughs> So what happened is I was preaching, I'm closing with this, that part of the story. I was preaching in Washington Courthouse, and I was sitting on the front row like Torrance and Afton, and the, the, the pastor called me up, here's Pastor Johnny Amos, and I got up and I went to the stage, I turned around, the whole group of them was there. Not only that they uh, saw the love, uh, saw me dying, but they came to church, they heard I was in the town, and they came to Washington Courthouse to find me. Come on, see what God can do when you die out of yourself, when you let love prevail. Somebody say hallelujah. Love is the most powerful weapon in our spiritual armor arsenal. There is no competition in love. 
When you walk in love, you walk in the wisdom of the Lord. Amen. If you ever want to walk in the wisdom of the Lord, walk in love. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. See, there's, and, and there's no competition. I, I don't envy any, anybody else's gift or their ability. Amen. I'm not scared or, or, or frightened of somebody else's gift. Matter of fact, if the gift came from God, amen, I promote it. See, some people would let other people come and preach in their pulpits on Sundays and do all this, but I, I, don't, I don't care. They can, you, can burn, you can take this house down, amen. You can burn it up with the word, and I'll, I'll say, go, preach, because I love does not, I don't compete. Now, if I'm playing basketball or playing your cards, you in trouble, okay? I'm going to slap that ace down, and you're going to be like, ow! Come on, back! Oh, no, come on, anyway, I'm sorry. Now, that's different. Hey, man, I'm going to try to beat you the best way I can. But when it comes down to spirituality, I want to see your growth grow. Because if it's growing, that's God growing in you. Does that make sense? All right. So, love, when you walk in love, you walk in the wisdom of the Lord. 1 Corinthians, third, the third chapter, if you would turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 11 through 15. It says, for, for no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold or silver or precious stones, hay or wood, each one's work will be, uh, become clear. For the day will be, will be, the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss, but he himself will say, be saved, yet so as through fire. Now, this is talking about that anything that we do as believers, as Christians, amen, we have to build everything that we do on the foundation of Jesus Christ. No other foundation. You will not hear me talking no other heresies, amen, it's not Jesus Christ plus something else. Come on, it's his word that we have to stand on. We got to abide by it. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Then it talks about a foundation of gold or silver or stones or hay or wood or straw. And what it, what it, what it means is that when we are doing what God called us to do, amen, it is, the question lies is, what is our motive operandi? What is our purpose in why we do what we do? Some people do things to be seen. Let me pray this prayer. Dear God, gracious one, the king of the ultimate space and universe, there's a million of these verses that you did. <laughs> Wait a minute, who are you talking to? What are you saying? Why are you up there trying to perpetrate the fraud? That ain't even how you talk. Come on. <laughs> they got a little squeaky voice going, yeah. but they get to pray. Oh, heaven is all. Thou knowest all things. <laughs> One time somebody did that, and I said, man, what are you doing? I said, I ain't even recognize you up there. I think he heard somebody do it and sound religious. I'm not trying to be religious. I said, I'm not working on being religious. I got a relationship with the king. Amen. I don't need to inflect my voice or cast it to that way or try to make you feel good naturally. I just need to live it. Come on, somebody. Ooh, that's big. That's a good statement. 
I just got to be it. Does that make sense? All right. So it is saying whatever you do, saints of God, your motive operandi, your MO about it, it, it counts in heaven. I'm volunteering to let everybody see I'm giving the homeless a turkey for Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. Your motive has to be love. And if it's, if it's not love, it's going to be burnt in the fire. What are you saying? It's not going to count for you. Come on. Oh, my God. I want to get ahead of myself here. Let me see. It's not going to, I'm going to say it anyway. It's not, it's not going to count for you. The Bible says, without faith is impossible to God, but it also says, um, they that come to God must believe that God is. Yeah. And that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently. So, that being said, God is going to reward us. Now, we want to make sure that what we do really count. And so, God is saying, if you're doing things out of envy, strife, uh, obligation, necessity, these things, God says, if, you, if your heart is not right, it doesn't count. Because on a judgment day, it's going to be burned up. And the things that you did out of love, Rewarded. Is this good news, anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's mine. All we're doing is like a wheel alignment. Amen. Our, our car was, you know, our steering wheel's turned sideways and we're going straight. Come on. We need a wheel alignment. The Lord is just aligning us. And this is why He's given us so much topics about love. Okay? Because He wants your efforts, your work, your attendance. Some people come to church for church uh, just for attendance. Check, I went to church Sunday morning. <laughs> Didn't get in the spirit the whole service. Didn't bless no one else, but I came. Come on. And as soon as we say, oh man, they out the door. They said, at least I win. Come on. Is this good for anybody? Anybody who's saying? Okay. All right. So what is your motive operandi? I want you to take a look at this. It's, 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 so, it's so strategic to me. And I'm, I'm about to close. I got a little more to go. Amen? Um, in the book of Corinthians, Paul wrote a letter to the church of Corinth, correct? In 1 Corinthians, it's very interesting, especially chapter 12, 13, and 14. In chapter 12, the Apostle Paul wrote concerning spiritual gifts. The, and the unity and the diversity of the spiritual gifts in the body. So Paul was writing about the gifts of the Spirit that comes when you get saved, you receive the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. He began to talk about them and, and how they all work, that we're one body uh, in Christ, but it's just one Spirit that is flowing through all of us. You guys understand? And so you might have the gift of healing, the gift of uh, tongues, the gift of whatever the gift. But that doesn't mean that your gift is greater than anybody else's gift. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to throw this mic. It's, it's going to be like Thor's hammer. I'm going to throw it. It's going to come back to me. Come on, somebody. And so and he talked about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts. But then... 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he talked about love. And then in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he began 
to speak about the administration and the functionality of the gifts. So the gifts and the functionality of the gifts um, was in uh, the gifts and the functionality of the gifts, but right smack in the middle, like a sandwich. You got a sandwich is like two pieces of bread and the meat is in the middle. I noticed that the meat of this was in the middle. In the meat of operating in the spirit, understanding the spiritual gifts, and, and then understanding the functionality of the spiritual gifts, he put love in the middle of it. Because you shouldn't try to operate in gifts, and that all the gifts should operate out of love. Does that make sense to you? And that's the reason I believe he put it there. He sandwiched love right in the middle. Because some people could shout and uh, uh, Corinthian, the Corinth church, amen, they had, a, they're just like our churches today, amen, they had a lot of dysfunction in it, they had a lot of craziness in it, and when people start getting spiritual gifts, when people thought they had it better, I got the spirit of discernment, I got the spirit of this, I got the, I'm a prophet, I'm a, whatever, they start saying, they thought they were something. And when you're nothing. In the sense of we can't do nothing without God. Right. Does that make sense? Right. Okay, so they got haughty. And so Paul had to put in the middle, you got to love to operate and function in these gifts. Is that good news for you? So we don't be hollering or jumping, stomping our feet and shouting and then uh, hating somebody right here in the church. The Bible says, lay down your gift at the altar. If you have an ought with your brother, take it to the altar before you try to minister. Get that thing right before you get, try to get out there and tell somebody something, something and then you got an evil eye on somebody else. How do I know I got an evil eye? Because when you see the person, your heart pounds on them. There he is. Here he comes again. Look at her, she thinks she's something. You got a problem. That's when you, I mean, you like bent out of shape. Okay, the enemy has a stronghold in you. You gotta let that go. Go to that person and say, listen, I'm what? I told you love will make you apologize. Love will, you are justified. Hey, kid, we like that. I love you know. No. And I, I know this is, you know, some people like, man, I'm not there yet. But don't worry about it. Just keep trusting God. Just tell the Lord I want to be there. I don't. I don't. I want to. I want to be there, Lord. I want to be right there where you're. Where you're talking about? Because I'm going through this uh, strife and envious. All right. Listen. I'm beginning to close. Let me see. Let me check it more time. Yeah. I'm going to close with this. Because I really feel like the Holy Spirit is working on you already. I felt like the Word of God has found that place that you need help in. The Bible says the Word of God, it is quick, powerful. Stronger than a two-edged sword, dividing between the soul and the spirit, even into the marrow of the bone. That is a discerner of our hearts, the intentions of our hearts. Our hearts, we need a heart transplant. We need a clean heart. We need a new heart. Because our hearts are forever wicked. Can I tell you the truth? It's wicked. And the word of God will wash that thing. The blood will cleanse that thing. If you will give it to him. If you will give your heart to him. St. John 15, 13 will be my last scripture. It says, 
Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down his life, one's life for his friends. No greater expression of love than to give yourself without thinking. And we know, uh, and I appreciate police officers and firefighters and first responders and people walking down the street and see a house on fire and they run in there to see, get the kids out. I appreciate that because they put their life on the line and at risk, okay? But we were in trouble like that. The world was on his way to hell. And Jesus, God sent his son to put his life on the line. And Jesus went in and, and delivered all of us. But he died for us. No greater love than this, than to lay down your life for a friend. Now, some of you may think that the Roman soldiers and Pontius Pilate put Jesus on the cross. Some of you may think it's the Jewish Sanhedrin that placed Jesus on the cross. But I'm here to tell you that it was love. Love that put Jesus on the cross because he so loved us that he gave his son. It was love that nailed his hands. It was love that put the crown of thorns. It was love, amen, that nailed his feet. It was love, amen, that pierced him in the side. It was love that whipped his back for 30 months. It was love that did these things. The song says, I was sinking deep within, far from a peaceful ship. I forget the rest. In the, where, where's, where's, where's Rosalind? I mean, I almost had to sing it. I was sinking deep in sin. Deep in sin. Or from a. Uh huh. Within. Sinking to rise no more, right? But the master. Her mind is spent. Why? Because, I, mean, I know y'all don't know this, y'all may know it, but it's saying that, that it was love that lifted me. It was love that rescued me. It was love that broke those habits, those addictions. It was love life down for free. Yes. Father, today I thank you for this word. I pray that something was said to remind us to love one another. 
Lord, it's not about black, white, Jew, Gentile, Protestant, Catholic. It's not about Republican, Democrat. Lord, it's about love. Let your love continue to flow in us. Thank you for being faithful with your love. Thank you for teaching us this lesson today that we have to die out to walk in love. Truly, it was love that lifted me. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, give God a hand clap praise. Come on, give a shout. He's going to to you. You better give him another praise. Hallelujah. If you are in need of prayer, Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.com. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.